Yes? The new patient is here. They're early. That's fine. We can start now. I'm glad you came. Just turning up shows your commitment to the process. Good. I've read your notes. The other therapist didn't work out for you. I want you to know this will be different. We take this at your pace. No notes. No drugs. No theories. We go back to the start. Understand what happened. Take a look at this short form. I promise it's the only one you'll see during your therapy. Try to answer truthfully. It's easier that way. Never cheated on a partner, really? Okay. Let's get started then. Cheryl! Cheryl? Sweetie? Cheryl! Cheryl! Sweetie?
Cheryl? Hey, Teresa. I gotta head off now, so I'm locking up. That woman came in, decided to sell the dress. Walked all the way here on her own. She seemed so sad, I almost didn't want to take it. Oh, well. Anyway, I locked up back as well. I stuck the key in Jane's jacket. Take care. Hallelujah. I knew this weather couldn't keep everyone away. <laughs> Name your poison. I'm looking for my daughter. 
In this weather? <laughs> if she's out, she'll be at the Balkan. That's a bar over on Block Street. No, she's a little girl. She's seven years old. We were in a car accident. I came to and she was gone. Oh, shit. I'd offer to call for help, but the phones are all out because of the storm. Town's kind of empty. This is her. Oh, a real daddy's girl. If you see her... This your ID? Yeah. Well, it says you live at Levin Street. That's a few blocks from here. Levin Street? That's where I live. That accident of yours, you take a knock to the head? <sighs> yeah. Your phone? My phone? It cut off. Like I said, phones are all shot to hell. I think that was her. She must be at the house. Wait. Have a drink before you head out. You seem pretty shaken up. I need to get home. She must be waiting for me there. Okay. I'm going to lock up out back. No point in staying open in this weather. <laughs> Best of luck.
Hey, it's Caitlin. I am looking at the world's most beautiful prom dress. I am so excited. Mike will be putty in my hands. Catch up tonight. Cheryl? Daddy? Daddy? Sweetie, you're okay? Are you at home? <laughs> Sweetie, wait there. Wait for me. You have to run, Daddy. You can't fight them. Run! What? Is somebody with you? Cheryl! I'm coming to get you! Damn it!
It's good that we touched on the car crash. That would have been a breakthrough before. But let's leave that topic for a while. I want to talk about family. It's important to you. For you, family is about physical affection and making your feelings known. You're giving me that look. I'm talking too much. Well, let's have you talk, or not, or whatever you feel comfortable doing. Let's play true or false. Is it true to say you're a private person? Would you say it takes a while for people to get to know you? Uh-huh. People can choose their friends, but not their family. Would you prefer to spend time with friends over family? Nothing surprising there. No. You're going to like this. On the table are some pencils and a picture. I want you to let out your inner child and color in the picture. It's titled Happy Family. finished? What a lovely family home. Is your home like this? Are you okay, son? No! What are you people doing in my house? Cheryl! Easy there. This isn't your house. Some trouble, honey? No, Lucy. This man here is just a little confused. This is my house! Well, I don't see how that can be the case. We've been here nearly 14 years. Sure you got the right address? Who was that? That was our daughter, Katie. You're in a bad way, son, getting yourself all worked up. Are you okay? I am not okay. I was in a car accident. My daughter is gone, and you people are in my house. This is all wrong. You're starting to make a scene. This doesn't make sense. Not at all. Cheryl! You are upsetting my wife. Get the hell out of my house. It's my house. It's my damn house! Cheryl! Sir, you come down here for me? The officer! There are people in my house. They have my daughter. I was in a car accident. That's not the story I got. Can I see some ID? Harry Mason. This is the right address. You know what? This doesn't add up. I'm gonna need you to come down to the station with me. We can sort it out there. No. My daughter is in there, somewhere. She's missing. I'm a police officer, Mr. Mason, and I need you to come with me. These people don't have your daughter. Trust me. If she's missing, we will find her.
You know what's funny? I've been a cop in this town for 20 years. Before that, I used to ride around in my daddy's patrol car, so I know the town, know the people. But your face? I don't know you. I keep out of trouble. Not tonight. Well, I guess tonight everything is out of whack. Why are we the only car on the road? No one's sane out driving tonight. Sorry, I didn't mean to... It's okay. What is with all this snow? Who knows? We only covered basic meteorology in the Academy. Hell, we didn't hear about this till it was happening. Barely had time to close off the major highways. It's like the whole town is being punished. It's only weather. Sure. You okay back there? Sure. Holding up. I'm sure your daughter's okay. We've just got to clear this thing up. We should probably get you to the hospital, too, once we know she's safe. <sighs> I'm fine. The human brain is a delicate thing, Harry. Need to get you checked out. Yeah. My dad thought he was tough. He got hit on the head by a punk resisting arrest. He was never the same after that. You gotta look after yourself, Harry. For your daughter's sake. Point taken. Damn, this snow is crazy. Oh, I can't see the road. Wait here. I'm just gonna check where we are. Where's she gone? Why do you never pick up? I need you. I'm at a party in the woods, but I'm feeling uncomfortable. I need you to come pick me up. Gonna need a key.
Mr. Mason. Officer Bennett? What's going on? I'm looking for you. Where the hell did you run off to? I'm in some woods. You just ran from a police officer. What? Come on. Look, Mr. Mason... I need to find my daughter. Christ. I'm not under arrest, am I? Mr. Mason! Get yourself back here now. Do not make things difficult for yourself. I'm heading back to town.
I'm coming back early. This was a stupid idea. Mom! Not now, honey. Mommy's on the phone. Get out of bed. Play with your daughter. Mommy! Shush! Go show Daddy. This whole trip was a bad idea. A week picnicking and cycling like that's gonna make it right. I'm still hurting. It feels fake. I don't want to be with him. I won! Mom! I won! All right. In a minute. Give me a second, Diane. It's good to talk, Diane. I feel pretty alone out here. Hey, Mom. Be careful! <laughs> Where's your dad? <laughs> Mommy! Oh, Jesus. You're bleeding? Thank <laughs> you. 
Officer? Harry, I've been calling you. Did you switch your phone off? No, I just... Uh, I was... I don't know where I was. Harry, you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm out of the woods. I'm on a football field. I think it's the high school. Midwich High School. Listen, Harry, Midwich has a gym. They often use it as an emergency shelter in severe weather. Go to the gym and wait there for me. Emergency shelter? Cheryl could have been taken there. Yes, Cheryl could be there. Will you do this for me? Yeah, I I'm going. But if Cheryl's not there, I can't wait. I I'm sorry, I just can't. Harry, it So we get to the halcyon days of high school. When I was starting out, the popular theory said it was their mom and dad that screwed a person up. But if you really want to screw someone up, I say, send them to high school. I bet your school locker was a real mess. You were one of those organized chaos types, right? Okay, let's move on. I'm going to throw out some words. Nod when they fit how you were at school. Shake your head if they don't. Ready? Jock. Next? Slut. Uh, drunk. Ah. Virgin. Hmm. Bully. And... Slacker. Okay. Let's take a different tack. On the table, I've laid out a blank timetable and some cards with lessons on them. Pick out the lessons to show me your perfect school day. Don't leave any empty. There are only four periods, and I've allocated a very generous lunch. that was all there was to it, it would have been a breeze, wouldn't it? Come on, let's talk more about the bad stuff that happened at school.
Never gonna be like our parents. Never gonna be apart. stop you but I'm uh, I'm looking for the shelter you're not here for the reunion no <laughs> some party me and a guy who wasn't even supposed to be here catch <laughs> thanks Michelle Valdez Harry Mason nice to meet you Harry so, what brings you here? I'm looking for my daughter. She's missing. I convinced myself she'd be here. She's a Midwich student? No, no. She's just seven. Her name is Cheryl. Cheryl Mason? Yeah. There was a Cheryl Mason when I was here. She was above me at school. <sighs> Must be a different girl, same name. She's seven. I'll show you. Come look. There you go. That's an old photo. You say she ran off? No. We were in a car accident. That can't be my daughter. <laughs> How many Cheryl Masons could there be in a small town like this? She even looks like you. There is a resemblance, but my Cheryl's just a kid. You don't sound so sure. Come on.
The principal's office? Yep. Locked. But with a little persuasion. <laughs> You're breaking into the principal's office? I don't see any hall monitors. Evening, Mrs. Albright. You cow. Is she still around? I remember her. She was when I graduated. I think she'll be here until someone drives a stake through her cold secretarial heart. That's the principal's PC. All the school records are on it. Students used to hack it to fix their grades. Hey, I was good at school. Principal Fisher was obsessed with changing his passwords. And we're hacking into his PC to... See if you can pull up the records for Cheryl Mason. See if she's your daughter. Prove me wrong. If I do, we get out of here? Sure. Take your time. I'm just going to text my boyfriend to find out where the hell he is. You break it? It just froze on me. It is her. It is her. We moved? You don't remember because of the accident? Simmons Street. It's not a great neighborhood. Why would we move there? I guess the cop was right. My ID was old. That wasn't my house. What else did I forget? There's a phone number. Why don't you call it? I will. There's no reception. I'll be outside. Good luck. Yes? Cheryl? No, Dahlia. You want me to find her? Who's calling? It's her father, Harry Mason. Is she okay? Harry? Is she okay? Who the hell do you think you are? Sorry? What's the... Leave me alone! <laughs>
Porsche behind you. I guess you're on your own. I was about to head off, I thought I ought to wait a little longer. Thanks. You okay? Any luck with the phone? They didn't make any sense. I need to go there. The Simmons Street address? That's the other side of town. You got a car? I was planning on getting a ride with John. There's my boss's SUV. Yeah, I'm looking after it while she's on vacation. It's at the club where I work, not far from here. I could give you a lift. That would be great. Lead the way. You want my jacket? You're going to freeze. <laughs> I'm used to running around in a dress. I'm too hot-blooded to feel the cold. I feel bad, you're sure? Yeah, keep it. You're the car crash guy. 
You thinking about your daughter? Constantly. I'm sure she's okay. I can't get my head around it. She was in the back sleeping, then the crash, and she was gone. Her head is still jumbled up, Harry. Just give it a while, okay? You should go see a doctor. I'll make sure Cheryl is safe, then worry about myself. John and I sort things out. He's staying in Massachusetts. He's a lawyer. We need to decide if I'm going to move out there. Either. You want to go to Massachusetts? Yeah. Well, not Massachusetts so much. But I want to be with John. And John? He wants it too. It's, it's this hard. You know, we've been together for five years, but we never lived together. Now we're out in the world, living our lives. John's a lucky guy. He's probably just lousy at showing it. I know lawyers. They're not so touchy-feely. Oh, John's not like that. Back in school, he was very passionate. They say absence makes the heart grow fonder. You believe that? Absolutely. Good thing we're closed. <laughs> How so? Not sure they'd let you in with that outfit. I'm the best dressed writer I know. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm dating a lawyer. The Balkan. Last time I was in a nightclub was for my... I need to answer this. The keys are in my room upstairs. Run up and grab them. John? Where have you been? I guess I can let you off the hook then. But you're gonna have to make it up to me. Uh-huh. Got the keys. I just need to finish my drink. Take a seat. I need something to warm me up in this weather. Things go okay with John? Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna come meet me here once I've dropped you off. This weather, such a pain. Oh, I should have offered you a drink. No, no, it's fine. I'm confused enough as it is. I just want to get going, put today behind me. Hey, everything's gonna be fine, you know? We'll be there soon, and, and then you can see your wife and daughter and... Wife? 
You're married, aren't you? You're wearing a ring. You okay? No, I'm a bit lightheaded. I gotta go clear my head. Michelle? Who the hell is Michelle? Just practicing my signature. We ready to go? Where's Michelle? Funny. Come on, let's get going. I'm going to drive. You, Mr. Harry, are way over the limit. Stop. This is out of control. I came in here with a girl called Michelle. She was going to drive me to Simmons Street. Who are you? Are you on something? I'm Dahlia. Hottest piece of ass you'll ever see in this town. You are Harry Mason. Generally, a fun guy to be with. What are you wearing these for? Stop being a dick and let's get going. We'll get to Simmons Street and see Cheryl. Cheryl? Your daughter... Oh, come on, you're not that wasted. That's why we're in this lousy club, to get the SUV so we can drive up to Simmons Street. That's right, but... It's just... no more craziness. You're freaking me out. Nobody out to play? I thought people liked the snow. Signals are down. We make a pretty sorry pair, huh? What? We're always so wasted. I'm pretty and you're vacant. You think we'd like each other if we ever met sober? I am sober. Well, that would explain you weirding me out. I don't think I am. You're not getting it. I don't know who you are. Maybe it was the car accident. I don't know. You're acting like we know each other, and I've never seen you before in my life. Seriously? You are screwed up. It's scary. I, I feel like I remember everything. But there's you, my daughter, things that don't fit. And I think I'm seeing things. Do you like what you see? Sorry? If I'm a stranger to you, what kind? You think I'm hot? You're young. <laughs> oh boy, Harry. You're really messed up. Is up. What can we do? Run up to the control room. See if you can get it moving. <sighs> okay. Look, don't flip out on me. No forgetting what you're doing and wandering off. Hey, I got it. I'll be waiting. Jesus. Jimmy here. Who's this? Mr. Capra? My name is Harry Mason. I need to lower the bridge. Hey, hey well, wait, will you? You know what time it is? I probably woke my kids. I'm sorry, but this is an emergency. I've been in a car accident. My daughter needs my help. I... and just... Okay, okay. You want to know how to operate the bridge controls? Yes. Okay, all right. Uh, Mr. Mason, listen carefully. You need to start by pushing the... Hello? 
Then... Sleeping up there? Let's get moving. Okay. Chicken shit to come out and say it? That's low. It's pathetic. Have some self respect. I'm not making this up. I'm not. Just drive. Dahlia, listen. I'm not gonna sit here and have you screw around with me. I don't need the hassle. <laughs> Dahlia! Oh! <gasps> 
nasty, but inevitable. Everyone is going to die, even if we like to pretend otherwise. You could die tonight, in your sleep. Why doesn't that terrify you? How would you like to die? No, wait, let me guess. You'd want to die surrounded by family. It's academic, really, as we're only truly conscious of death when it happens to others. Yet to my age, you'll have seen plenty of people die. There, one minute, then, gone. Okay, game time. There are seven pictures of people on the table. Your job is to tell me who is dead and who is merely sleeping. Divide them up. Left, dead. Right, sleeping. Done? It's just an exercise. There's no right answer. Actually, they were all dead. Okay, let's get back to it. Who's Dahlia? A girl. The car went into the river. She drowned. Another crash? This is a different girl? You must have seen the bridge. We went right off the side. Harry, the bridge has been closed since the storm started. You swam. You could have died of hypothermia. My clothes? You were soaked to the skin. I grabbed what I could find here. We need to talk. When I was at the station, I pulled the file on Harry Mason. So... No! No!
say she'll be fine. She's young. It'll heal easy. She's fine. She liked the bear and the chocolates. Huh? It's hardly spoiling her. And the song. And the song, sweetie. And I got the DJ to play her a song on the radio. Yeah, well, I'll be here for another half hour till visiting time is up. Request has been selected for broadcast. Get well soon. Use the number of the tune you want from our top ten list. Keep listening. Al Camilla, healing through music. As requested, here's a popular tune, Daddy's Girl. she's gonna be okay thank god he's spoiling her rotten you know she's gonna get fat sitting in bed all day eating chocolates he's trying to make me feel bad Are you okay? You're not from the hospital. No. I had an accident. That yours? No. Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm not making any sense, am I? It's okay. Let's get you inside. You need help. I want to go home. I have medicine and gauze there. I'm a nurse. It's a few blocks north. I just need to rest. Well, I'm headed that way. Can you walk? Yeah, I'm feeling better. <sighs> Don't worry. Head wounds always bleed a lot. Lots of blood vessels close to the surface. It's nothing serious. I can clean up back at my place. Lisa. I'm Harry. Harry Houdini. <laughs> Sorry. I'm always saying goofy things that come into my head. My apartment isn't far. We've got the wind behind us. The freezing wind. You cold? I'm too tired to feel it. You know the average ER nurse gets less than five hours sleep a night? I read that in a newsletter. Ronald Reagan ran the country on five hours of sleep a night. I saw that on TV. Yeah, but he got to sit down a lot. The nurse is on her feet all day. And night. I don't need a man in my life. I need a really good podiatrist. What is it you do, Harry? I'm not a podiatrist. Figures. I'm a writer. Wow. I didn't know Silent Hill had a famous writer. <laughs> Hardly famous. Have I heard of any of your books? My mom reads a lot. Bet she's read one. Maybe. I wrote a romance series called Longing for the Moon. That was popular with moms. Romance? My agent tells me I have great insight into the female imagination. You could put me in one of your books. Life and death drama in the ER. One girl search for love. The nurse falls for the dashing doctor? There are no dashing doctors. They're all alcoholics and perspire too much. I always fall for the guys who look like my dad and then regret it the next day. Cute. If you were a real writer, you'd be taking notes. Don't you all carry notebooks to write everything down? Not me. I've got a photographic memory. Not far now. You still feeling okay? 
Yeah. Fine. So tell me about your daughter. Cheryl? She's, uh... She's young, bright, happy. Likes collecting stuff. You know, bits and pieces. Bugs. She loves bugs. Bugs? Like dirty, creepy bugs? No, no butterflies. Pretty bugs. She has a collection. Dead ones? Yeah. Still creepy. Not really. You seem to see the creepy in everything. Is that a nurse thing or just you? Definitely a nurse thing. We have a unique outlook on life. Whatever happened to Ben? Here we are. My apartment is just around the corner. Used to belong to the super. It's a lot bigger than the others, but I only pay standard rent. The landlord has a thing for nurses. Grab a seat. I'm just gonna get out of these things. I oughta... Uh-uh, you're not running off yet. Warm up before you head back out there. I haven't thanked you yet. Five minutes, come on, sit. Sit! Watch some TV if you want. I won't be long. You know, last time I had a guy in my apartment, it was summer. During the heat wave. Now it's winter. Freaky early, but still. Time flies. You know, you're a nice guy, Harry. Thanks. I feel safe around you. Are you okay? <sighs> Headache. Be a hero. Fetch me some pills from the bathroom. Check the cabinet. Get me some yellow ones. Sure. Shelf. Oh, my head. Self-medication. <laughs> the one true perk of the healthcare profession. It's not just coffee that keeps us going 24-7. <laughs> okay, I'm going to sleep now. You let yourself out. You feel guilty about everything. When we all lived in huts and wore furs, we worried over the simple things. Food, water, whether animals would come and eat us in the night. Now we have supermarkets, bottled water, and 38 caliber home security. So what keeps us awake at night? More often than not, guilt. If only I had acted differently. If only I hadn't said that. If only I'd said something. You beat yourself up with your past. Don't blame yourself. Blame the world. Blame God. Blame me. Okay, this is my favorite. Let me introduce some friends of mine. This is King Harold. His daughter, the chaste Celestine. A prince called Wilhelm. And a bull. He doesn't have a name. Prince Wilhelm is passionately in love with Celestine, but she does not love him. One day, Wilhelm comes to the king and asks for Celestine's hand in marriage. 
Celestine begs the king not to marry her to Wilhelm, but the king ignores her pleas. Royal protocol means he must say yes to the match. They are married, and Wilhelm takes Celestine back with him to his kingdom. That night, he attempts to consummate the marriage, but the distraught Celestine flees. She runs from the safety of the castle and across a field, ignoring the sign which warns of danger. In that field is a bull, who, seeing the girl, charges her. She falls under his hooves and is killed instantly. What I want you to do is line the players up according to how guilty they are of Celestine's death. Whose fault was it? At the left, most culpable. To the right, most innocent. You want to hear that again? Done? Poor Harold. You felt he should have ignored protocol. I find the best cure for guilt is to never get caught in the first place. Let's continue.
Lisa? Harry. Oh, Harry. I don't feel well. What's wrong? I woke up. I had such a terrible dream. Blood everywhere. Oh, God, Harry. Try to stay calm, Lisa. I'm coming. Please hurry. I... Lisa? No! Don't move. No. This isn't what... I said don't move. Stand up and step away from the girl. This isn't what it looks like. Stop talking. What have you done? She was in an accident. I didn't do this. Accident? Shut the hell up. You've been feeding me bullshit all night. You bastard. I didn't... Shut up! I know you're not Harry Mason!
uh, gonna be home when we get back? Sure. Sure. No, she's fine. Can I have some bubble gum? Oh, sure. Here. She wanted some gum. It's hardly spoiling her. Wait. No, I don't want those colors. I want my favorite colors. What are your favorite colors? Mom knows. I'm sure she does. You hear that? Yeah, well, she won't tell me. The mascot? The cartoon bird? Okay. Like this, sweetie? Yes! Save some for later. I'll keep this one for mom. That's a great idea. Come on, last one of the escalators is it.
but you know I'm okay. John's here, finally. We're gonna see if we can find a bite to eat. I'm glad. How are you doing? I'm, uh, I'm okay. I'm on my way to Simmons Street. Michelle, what happened at the club? What? Sorry, Harry, you're breaking up. What was that? Michelle? code again? Yeah, I know you told me. I got a lot to remember.
Gone for so long, I started to worry. Sweetie? Who the hell are you? Harry? How do you know me? Where's Cheryl? Still at the lighthouse, maybe. Lighthouse? What are you doing here, Harry? Looking for Cheryl. Isn't this my house? Who are you? You look really good. Who are you? We're soulmates, you and I. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. You're my wife? <laughs>
Cyril. This is your room. But you're not in it. You know, I think we're getting somewhere. We're all tied up in this marriage thing. Marriage worked a lot better when we didn't live so long. We have phrases like the honeymoon is over to remind us how quickly marriage is sour. You think I'm being cynical? Divorce does that to you. Come on, you think marriage can really last? Should a couple stay together for the kids? Do you think it's a bad idea to marry young? You think sex becomes stale after marriage? You know what? You being such an expert on marriage, you're going to ace my matchmaker test. On the table are six pictures. All you have to do is sort them into three married couples. All finished. Okay, now tell me which of those couples are still together. <laughs> I'm joking. You know I'm just trying to provoke you, right? Oh, let's keep going. We're really making progress here. Harry? Harry? Were you dreaming? Are you okay? What are you doing here? This place is... Your home, right? I saw the photos of you in the corridor, you and your family. Cheryl isn't here. I'm sorry. The woman said Cheryl was at the lighthouse. The lighthouse closed down years ago. Now I need to go there. John and I can drive you there. We'll take the lake road. Thank you. Harry, this is John. John, Harry. Hey, Michelle says you kept her company earlier when I was late. Thanks. Good to meet you. Nice car you got, John. I always wanted one of these. But when Cheryl was born, we graduated to the family car club. Trunk space wins out over engine size. I'd swap the car for a family any day. Though I'm happy enough with just John for now. Cut it out, Michelle. Huh? It's embarrassing. Uh, I'm not embarrassed. Don't mind me. This isn't how I wanted things to go. It's not Harry's fault. I Nothing mean... to do with Harry. I mean this. Us. I wanted to make things clear. I wanted to do things right. What are you saying? This reunion, this weekend. I wanted to come see you to talk things through. Talk? About our relationship? Michelle, there is no relationship. Please, don't do this. Not now, John. If not now, when? Where? Christ, Michelle, I've been trying to do this for months. But you don't want to hear it. Now we have a witness. Maybe you'll listen. You're just tired. You're not thinking right. It's been too long since we've been together. No. No, Michelle. I was hoping to do this right, but I need to do it. 
We've been running on empty for a long time. Living on fumes. It isn't a relationship, it's a courtesy. I still love you. It can't be over. It is! You don't love me. You love the John in your head. Please. I can't listen to this. I can't do this anymore. John! Cheryl? Daddy? You shouldn't come. No, sweetie, it's I... It's not safe. Please, don't come. It's over, John and me. I don't think he's loved me for a long time. I was in love with an idea of this person. But that wasn't John. <sighs> what a waste. You know, I should have realized when he said he wanted to be a lawyer. You're still headed for the lighthouse? Yeah. You'll need a boat to cross the lake. They often moor at the jetty behind the amusement park. Head through the alley out back, you'll see it. I used to go there with John. I doubt it's as exciting as I remember it. Are you sure you want to go, Harry? That's all I got. Something feels wrong. 
She's there. I know it this time. I'll get my answers. You might not like them. We're getting deep in it now. I can almost taste it. All this talking, and we still haven't touched on the sex thing. That's what you're thinking. Aren't all psychiatrists supposed to be obsessed with sex? It's not us. It's you. You probably think you are more emotional than sexual. But they're the same thing. Come on. Let's have some fun. See the pictures on the table? I want you to divide them up. The ones you think are a sexual symbol go on the left. The ones that aren't, the right. Done? Good. Of course, the constant partner of sex, the other side of the same coin, is... death. Sex is death. It's a leap into the void, the great loss of self. The tiger in space, a plea for annihilation. To deny sex is to deny death itself. You know, people who are getting enough don't need analysis. You clearly are not getting enough. Let's see this through to the end.
It's not ruined. We're just glad you're safe. Those swans pack a mean peck. They do? Yeah, like this. <laughs> You're late. For what? Your party. I started without you, so you're playing catch-up. What is this place? It's a boat. It's like a car, but goes on water. We float this baby out into the middle of the lake, and we can do whatever we like. No one to tell us what to do. I need to get to the lighthouse. Well, it can do that, too. For a price. My daughter is there. I need to be there. Harry, Harry. Always with the weight of the world on his shoulders. I remember when you were a fun-loving guy. We're talking about my daughter, damn it! Okay, okay. We'll be at the lighthouse in about 20 minutes. It's a slow boat. Why won't you take this seriously? Sorry? Cheryl is in trouble. Cheryl is always in trouble. What do you know about Cheryl? Very little. I try not to pry into your family life. You have the same name as my wife. Stop it! Stop it. Can't we just relax? For once?
back. I can't. It's too late now. For our daughter's sake. Me. I'm not here to stop you. 
I didn't have to fish you out of the water, did I? Stop talking! You can't talk me out of this! I'm not here to stop you! I pulled your file at the station. I told you that, right? If you're telling the truth, this doesn't make sense. But I think you are telling the truth. I believe you think you're Harry Mason. Hell, I believe you are Harry Mason. But Harry Mason was killed in a car crash 18 years ago. You want answers? I guess they're waiting in there. That's the lighthouse? Nothing's quite what you expect, is it? <sighs> I'm gonna stick with my gut from now on. <laughs> Would've saved us both a lot of trouble. Hope this works out for you. This is going nowhere. I'm spelling it out, but you're not listening. Your troubled school days? How you're conflicted about marriage? Your denial of death? The unfounded guilt? Abnormal sexuality? 18 years of denial. A whole universe of fantasy in that thick skull of yours. A skull teeming with agents of repression. Blind children clutching photos in the dark. Pale freaks, goggle-eyed from watching home movies on loop. The term is complicated grief. But it's simple, isn't it? A young girl. Her parents don't get along. She blames herself, as all children do. Then daddy dies. What's a girl to do? Deny that daddy died. Deny who daddy was. What seven-year-old actually knows who their parents are anyway? So she obsesses and obsesses over this fantasy dad propping up her make-believe with scraps, scraps of a happy life that never was, scraps of a father who never existed. Wake up! Your dad wasn't a hero. Wasn't your knight in shining armor. He was a human being. You never knew him. And you never will. The dad walking around in your head isn't even a ghost. He never existed. A Frankenstein's monster, a child's fantasy. But you're alive. Your mother is alive. She's not the monster you make her out to be. You need to live your life. Cheryl. so long. I always will be. Thank you. 